Hello, this is Professor Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at the Fashion Institute of Technology uh, doing another tutorial for JD138 uh, or basic rhino modeling. Back into the uh, drawing of your uh, brilliant diamond, your round brilliant stone. Um, it's time to take this drawing off of the flat and into three-dimensional space. I'm going to change this into my perspective viewport. I'm going to do it with a, th with a keyboard shortcut. Um, of course, I could just double click on this, pick it, and double click it again. Like this, and then pick perspective. But I never actually do that when I work. When I work, I hold down, I use the Rhino default keyboard shortcut, and that is to hold down the control key with my thumb, and then I hit tab. And each time I hit tab, it will cycle through the views, and I want to be in perspective. I want to organize these views as they will actually sit in three-dimensional space. First thing I'm going to do is group them. Because right now I can pick individual lines and I don't want to do that. Because in a minute here I'm going to have things on top of each other. And if I can pick individual elements it'll make things confusing. So I'm going to drag a window around the front view and group them by Control G using Control G. You can also get that off of the Edit Menu Groups group. Control G. Control G. Same. Got to color code them to make our job easier. Going to put the top view on the top layer. Put the bottom view on what would be the front layer normally when I draw. You'll notice I do have names to my layers. It's because when I'm normally drawing a, a ring or a project, I organize my geometry according to this. But for our purposes, it's just a way to tell things apart. I'll use the red layer for the front. The red, yeah. Okay. So now I need to get these all on top of each other. So. I built each one around a grid intersection, so it'll be easy to just use grid snap. To put them all in the middle. I'm not going to do anything with the top view. I'm not going to do anything with the bottom view. but I am going to rotate the front view. I want to rotate it so it stands straight up. So, as you recall from class, when you want to rotate, it's C-plane dependent. I made that into a right C-plane. Rotate. Center of rotation is zero. And I want to type in uh, 90 degrees. Counterclockwise is 90 degrees and we want it to rotate in this direction. So typing in minus 90. I was wrong for some reason. Okay, hang on. No. Alright, I get that messed up sometimes. Actually, uh, clockwise is a positive direction? I don't think so, Rhino. I am a little confused by this. Because counterclockwise should be a po Oh, that's right. I just said it and I'm doing the reverse. Counterclockwise is a positive direction and we want it to go counterclockwise. So type in 90. There we go. My mistake. Going to return the C plane to the top. going to draw the crown of the stone first. So I won't need anything from the pavilion. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this, which is Control shift g or Edit, Group, Ungroup from the menu. One of my facets is already ready to go. My table.
this is where it sits in the top view, but I need it to be where it belongs in three-dimensional space, which is up here. Since I know that this represents the widest point of my table. I need to get it from here to there. So I need to be looking at um, different object snaps that I can use to snap that into perfect position. There are right now several options and I will go through them as an example in, in how to be creative with your object snaps. I can do mid and point because I made two points. M enter, point to move from, grab the midpoint, point to move to, grab the point. Let's say I don't have the points there. I can go midpoint, end. And that will work. Okay. I can use intersect snap because the lines of this view are intersecting the line from this view. So there's an intersection point right there. Intersection. And wherever you have a corner and a polyline, that's also an intersection because two curves are meeting. That works. Okay. It's so another way, and this is how I normally do a lot of things, is, is I use a project option. When I turn on project, any pick point I make, see the rubber band that takes that intersection down to the table? I mean down to the uh, C plane? That's what project does. Project takes any object snap pick point and throws it onto the current C-plane. Okay? Well, since I'm trying to line up something in the front view, I'll turn on my front C-plane. And now, I can use end snap because I want the end See how that rubber band's back there? It projects that pick point onto the C-plane. I want it to go from this endpoint to this endpoint. Now anything I pick on that view is going to already be on the front C-plane because that, C that view is sitting on the front C-plane. But that works beautifully. If I didn't have project enabled, and I picked the same two points, I would get that. Okay. So what it does is it allows me to project an object snap that's not on the C-plane to the C-plane and then basically move that thing parallel to the C-plane. Because anything else I pick will be on the C-plane. You can't pick anything off of the C-plane when you have project engaged. I'm going to repeat that. You can't pick anything off of the C-plane when project is engaged. Every pick point will be on the same plane. So end will be on the same plane. End will be on the same plane. Mid will be on the same plane as mid. Okay a whole lot of effort to get that into place. But that helped me, you know, give me a chance to walk you through some of our options. The other facet I already have drawn is my girdle. The rest I do not have drawn. I want to move this line that has all of my points for my star facets up to my elevation reference in the front view, which is here. 
Well, we just discovered how by using project. I can go to the front seaplane and this will flatten any pick points I make onto that seaplane. So I'll pick end, M enter, point to move from this star facet point, point to move to the same star facet point in the front view. Since I used project, every pick point will be coplanar, will be on the same plane, and that is the construction plane. So things will simply move straight up and down along the seaplane. Okay? So I have that. Now I'm going to draw my facets. I don't want project anymore because I want to be able to pick right on the geometry. End to end, end to end, end to end, end to end. Make sure you pick the right end. I almost reached in and grabbed that. Okay. And I've begun my three dimensional drawing. Now I'm going to draw the bottom half of my bezel facets, the kite shaped facets on the crown. I'll start with this one in the front view by coming out to this three-dimensional drawing in my top view, clicking on its point up to the point of the star facet, down to the point of the bezel facet at the girdle, up to the star, down to 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 the girdle. You shouldn't have been able to click any further. It should have stopped you because it's now a closed curve. I don't need this geometry anymore to be looking at it. I don't want to bother changing a layer. So I'm going to hide it Okay. I'm not sure where hide is on the menus. I never use it there. I use the keyboard shortcut, of course, which is control H for hide. I can get that back whenever I want by going control shift H. Select objects to show, click, hit enter, and it's back. You'll notice that there's a similarity in that methodology between hide and group. Group was control G, ungroup was control shift G, hide was control H, unhide was control shift H. So, control H. The last line I'm going to draw, uh, or lines I will draw, will be the dividing line between the upper bezel, uh, upper girdle facets. Sorry. So, simple line, straight up. Now I can draw that eight times, or I can do a polar array. I want you to remember that polar array is 
C-plane dependent, like most transforms in Rhino. So if I do a polar array right now, polar array, center of polar array is zero, right in the middle of the stone, number of items is eight, 360 degrees, enter and accept. That's not really what I wanted. Okay? But it did it because I did a polar array using the front C plane. It's a nice thing, but it's not what I was after. But if I change to the top C plane and repeat the command, zero for center, eight, they go around. Okay? I would like to keep a complete top view for my records in my file. Problem is I've moved around things and hidden things and messed it all up. First thing I'm going to do is restore the table. To do that I'm going to control C or edit copy. That copies this outside of Rhino onto the Windows clipboard. Now I'm going to control V or edit paste to bring it in. It's going to look the same, but there are actually two of these here now. I'm going to leave the one that I pasted selected. And I'm going to project to C plane, which in our shortcuts is C, enter. And I want to delete the input object. I don't want a copy of it. I'm going to change that back to green. Change layer is control D with our shortcuts. You can also do it by right clicking right on the layer box, color box, okay? And you can change object to layer. Oh. For some reason, I got two of those. Okay, I'm going to do that again. That should work from here. And it's not. What it's doing is making a copy of it each time. And that means that I have a command option set. Every time I do it from there, I'm going to get a copy. I can delete the copy, but that's what's going to happen. So, do Control D. Pick the color layer you want. Hit OK going to unhide my star facet from the top view. Control Shift H. Select what I want, hit enter. I'm going to project that back to the C plane as well. Now I'm going to turn off that layer. And I've drawn the top view of my stone. Or the, the Sorry, the 3D crown of my stone. I'm thinking, <laughs> my mouth is not cooperating. All right, bringing in the bottom view. I need to do the same thing. The, the bottom point is easy. The culet's right there in the front view. All the information of the girdle is on the girdle already. The main thing I need is this elevation in the front view. I'm going to get it the same way that I got it before. And ungroup, control shift G. Okay, in this case, it looks like I did not draw a single line, but rather arrayed the information around. That's okay, but it means I'm going to have to reselect each one of these. Your drawing may vary. And then I'll group them back together, control G. So this unit moves as a block. Going to set my C plane to the front. M enter. Project option. Going to grab the end of these lower girdle facets, which would be the cleft of the main, and move them to where they go 
in my front view drawing. Okay. I'm going to draw my main facets first. So I don't have any mains that are looking right at me. One main is off to this side, the other main is off to this side. I will draw this main. It begins, I don't want project anymore. It begins at the point of a bezel facet, as all mains do. Comes down to that cleft, comes down to the culet, back up to that cleft, and back to the point. Now see the fact that I can keep doing this means that there's something wrong. That should be a closed curve. And I don't know what is the matter, but I must resolve it. So before I do anything else, you enter. Okay? See how there's end and point, end and point? I want the one that says end and point together. I don't even know where there's a point there. I don't see one. But Rhino was a little confused. So if you ever have that happen, you've got to go back and make sure that it actually won't let you go any further so you have a good closed curve. Otherwise, this is important. We're going to surface this next. If everything doesn't fit watertight, your project will fail. Again, if everything does not fit watertight, your project will not work. So, you can't have anything that's not a closed curve when you do that. Everything has to come to a nice, clean seam. All right. I'm going to polar array that. I learned from my last experience that I want that in the top C plane. Polar array, center, zero, number, eight, and then hit enter twice to accept 360 degrees, and to accept the final result. I can hide these now. Control H. So my drawing's easier to look at. And I'm going to draw the dividing line between the lower girdle facets. Which is easy because they line right up. The lower girdle facets and the upper girdle facets share the same seam. It's right there. You can see it lines up from the top. You can see it lines up from the front. Going to polar array. Make sure I'm in top C plane, because that's the direction I want. Eight, enter twice. I would like to preserve my views again, so I'm going to turn off the white layer. I'm going to unhide, control shift H, these elements. Project them back to the C plane. And I'll actually select the whole thing again, that whole view, and group it Control G. So I can select it with one click. And that'll be done. Look, my top view's missing something. We didn't return the girdle. Just gonna control C, control V, control that's control C is copy, control V is paste, control D is change layers, change the copy and pasted girdle back to the green layer, top, and there. I'm going to drag a window around that whole view and group it again. I'm going to restore my views to their original position and orientation. This one, I use grid snap, 
and bring it down twice. This one is where it belongs. This one I set the C plane to right. Rotate, center of rotation will be at zero. And this time it is a minus 90, the reverse direction of last time. I seem to have that wrong again. <laughs> now that's... Wait a minute. I keep, and this is embarrassing in a recorded tutorial where there's evidence, I want the point to come upward, which is clockwise. Clockwise is a minus direction. Should be minus 90. But for some reason, that's rotating it that way. I honestly can't explain why that is. That shouldn't be. Because 90 would be counterclockwise and it should go that direction. Fine. Rhino's arguing with me. Something to be aware of as we go through this little bit of confusion. Often what I do when I rotate is I do it by eye. With precision, but by eye. I'll demonstrate. Rotate 2D, center point is 0, enter. I don't want grid snap on for this. I'll come down and I'll grab, in this case the Qlet, then I'll hold the shift key down. And I can only rotate 90 degree increments. When I get the one I want, I click. Okay. Return C plane to top. Take that front view. Move it to its original position. I will put all of these... Eh, I'll put them on a dark layer, a purple layer, so they don't stand out as much. Bring back our 3D stone. And there you go. Oh, that's why. <laughs> this is the orientation. I moved these the wrong direction when I initially moved them, which is why rotate was the wrong way. Okay, all right. Fine. Brought them over there. All done. Thanks for watching.